What is motion control and why do we care so much about it? Well, if you want to clone yourself without dedicating your life to science, all you need is a camera, a tripod, and a computer. If you want the camera to move, however, that's where motion control comes in? Exactly. You can think of motion control kind of like a moving tripod. Cool. Hey, what's up guys? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. My name is Ben Myers and this is MRMC Academy. This series is designed to take you on a journey through the world of MoCo. You'll learn things from history to techniques of all levels. This episode is meant to be more of an introduction so that we can make sure that we get off on the left foot. <laughs> At its core, if you need to control the path that the camera will follow through 3D space, that's motion control. MoCo has a ton of uses that we will get into, but here are some of the most common ones to get you started. Multi and repeat paths. Uh, in order to create some fun effects, such as cloning someone like you saw at the beginning of this video, uh, you need to composite multiple takes together. In order to add camera motion to your composites, uh, you need motion control robotics so that you can guarantee that the camera will follow the same path through 3D space every single time. Uh, this makes it much easier when you are layering them in post because none of the background elements will shift around. Synchronization. Ensuring that the camera shutter opens and closes at the same point in time along the path. This is crucial for multi-pass moves. Uh, you could think of synchronization almost like the drummer in a band. Uh, it's the heartbeat that keeps everything together. Precision paths. This is the path that the camera will follow through 3D space. Uh, there are many different ways to create, import, and export these paths, which we will get into in later videos. Flare. This is the software that runs it all. Without Flare, it would be really difficult to program these complex camera moves with target tracking. Triggering and timing. Uh, Flare acts as the conductor in the symphony so that you can have full control over when things start and stop. The goal with MoCo is to make things repeatable. Triggering helps make complex systems repeatable. Scaling. Flare has the ability to change the size of the path that the camera will follow for these repeat passes, which allows you to combine elements such as miniatures with people to create some pretty cool effects. Slow motion and high speed. This is probably one of the more popular combinations as of late. High speed robots definitely pair nicely with high speed cameras such as the Phantom Flex. Having that extra speed of the Bolt lineup really adds to the immersive experience of slow motion footage. Interoperability, combining live action with CGI for complex, unique, or pre-visualized shots. MoCo can actually replace camera trackers in studios that use in-camera visual effects, or ICV effects as it's called in the industry. Uh, Flare makes it easy to send positional data or other types of data to Unreal Engine or whatever in real time. Stop motion, uh, moves can be programmed at normal speed and then shot step by step, frame by frame as the animation comes to life. Moving time lapse. You can really enhance the look and feel of your time lapses just by adding some simple camera motion. Now, why do we care? Well, we've been pioneers in this industry for over 50 years now, and for us, it's truly a way of life. We firmly believe that rising tides lift all boats. This series aims to ensure that every operator, new or old, has all the tools they need to be successful. We hope you've enjoyed this introductory episode, and we look forward to sharing more of the history of MRMC and MoCo in the next one. Peace.